Okay, for the first time, I've always used natural tanning products, but I did a job for a guy, and uh, in payment, he gave me this Trapper's High Tanning Formula. Actually, he gave me about seven of them. So, apparently it's really easy. In the past, I've used uh, uh, an alum solution with a bit of salt and so on. The problem with, I mean, it works really well. It preserves the hide very well. The problem is that when the hide dries a little bit, it dries quite hard. And uh, it makes it a lot more work to, to, to work it and work it and work it and soften it up. So I'm going to give this a try. I have it anyways. Um, about, a, about a third of the bottle should do this piece of deer hide I've got here. And then I'll take another bottle and what's left of the two-thirds here. Uh, if this works out well, then I'll use it on the moose hide that I was doing the other day that I've taken the hair off as well. You don't want, uh, I guess you can use this on a hide that you've got hair on. Uh, as long as you're careful not to slop it over onto the hair side, just get it on the, on the flesh side. So, let's give it a whirl. Now what you're supposed to do is, uh, I've poured just the amount I want, I want for this, and you put it in some water, very hot water, just tap, hot tap water. And, uh, and then you brush it on. Brush it on fairly liberally. Oh yeah, it looks... Now I'm using a brush on this, and the reason is that this is a tanning solution. So, the whole purpose of it, its whole cause for living sort of thing, is to uh, change the, the hide, kind of an alchemy, into a leather product. Um, probably not something that you want to do to your fingers. So, I'm going to say that either rub it on by hand using a pair of very good quality gloves uh, or save yourself the mess and just put it on this way. Gets it on nice and smoothly and what the heck, you know, does a good job. I don't think it matters. As long as you get it pretty thorough coverage, I don't think it really matters, uh, you know, how smooth and pretty it looks. Just make sure you get it on to all of the locations. Don't, I've spread it out so that we don't get any little cracks and crevices and areas that might not get the stuff. Make sure you can get into the little rolls like this. Anywhere you don't get it that doesn't tan, you'll end up trimming that off later. So even if you lose a tiny bit on the edge for whatever reason, you know, unless you, if you're tanning a hide as a, you know, like as a bearskin rug or something and you really don't want to lose anything off of it, then obviously be very careful that you get it everywhere. This is a more of an experimental hide. I don't really care. Well, I do. I mean, I hate to see anything go to waste. So, um, but whether it turns out outstandingly or not is uh, is as much the project here. It's an experiment as much as anything else. Whoever skinned this hide obviously didn't do it with the intention of anybody ever using it for anything. It was uh, pretty roughly done. I wouldn't be surprised if they skinned it with a lawnmower or something because it was pretty torn up. Uh, I know that's being a bit smart, but nevertheless it was, but I guess when you're, when you have no intention of using it for anything, you know, just tear it off, get it, get it off. So I guess that's what they did. Anyway, okay. So we'll just slide that up a little bit, set this down or I won't spill it. I'm kind of notorious, oh, I've still got quite a ways to go. I may have to heat up a bit more. This works out, I might, even though it won't be necessary, I might uh, put the uh, tripod up over the fire pit out here in the back here and smoke it just, uh, just to give it that sort of rawhide smoke sort of appearance. In this particular case, because this is an actual tanning formula, it's not going to be something that's required to, to preserve the hide, which would normally have been done in the, in the past. But uh, just because, just because it was an idea to do it. I have far too many projects in my mind. I'm gonna have to learn to slow down, but it's like the saying says, you know, you don't get old. You don't stop doing things because you get old. You get old because you stop doing things. So as long as I've got an unlimited number of crazy projects to do. 
I expect to live forever. I'll, uh, I'll have to update you on how that works out in the future because there are those who think that might not work out, so we'll see. Some people are pessimists. Okay, I had to mix up a little bit more. So I had to wait the half hour. And we'll carry on. Something I should have mentioned at the very, very start of this, and I can't believe I haven't mentioned it before we even got going, was eye protection. I can't imagine the consequences of getting this stuff in your eyes. You know, it's, it is a chemical, it's used to tan a hide, and so therefore, it, you know, it makes changes to the, to the texture and the finish of the, of the flesh and surface that it gets onto. And I can't imagine, like I said, how much damage that could cause to somebody's eye if it splashed in. So for crying out loud, amongst everything else, eye protection would be number one more than anything. You can always get your finger fixed up a little bit if you get some on there and it causes you any grief. You got a helicopter coming over here. But uh, man, you know, you could lose an eye maybe. I don't know, but I don't want to know. Just be very, very cautious with this stuff. Any chemical you use can have some pretty devastating effects that you might not even imagine to associate with that particular you know item so just keep it in mind these are not videos that are intending to teach anybody anything you're just following along on my daily you know, sort of chores and life around the homestead here so by all means if you decide to try any of this stuff or try any of these products or whatever you know do some research on it and learn more and more about it than you you know you can just never know too much about something and especially when that that something has the potential to have you know some dangerous effects even if they're relatively minimal still you know always always err on the side of caution so once this is painted on like this you book it over on itself like that and uh, leave it for I think it's around 24 to 48 hours at whatever point and then you can unravel it and uh, it start, it, by then it should be starting to dry a little bit but it shouldn't be dry to the point where it's really hard so I guess at that point you start working it. Now I'm hoping that this, this product, unlike the uh, alum that I've been using, won't have the same tendency to dry things rock solid. I'll show you the moose hide, which hasn't even had the alum on it yet. And uh, it's like plywood, and you, in fact, if I had a half dozen of them or more, I could use them as the boarding for the inside of the trailer, which would be very cool, but it would take me quite some time to accumulate six or seven moose hides but if you stretch them flat and let them dry without trying to work them and just let them dry hard you would have plywood basically well the boys and the other ones in there somewhere in the reeds there have cornered a red squirrel teeny tiny little fella Let's see if we can zoom in on him I don't know if we're gonna be able to get close enough to really get a Right at the top there. There he is. They're not very big, these guys. Okay, here's our moose hide. As I was saying, I've still got to get the last bits of hair out of it and so on, but I've just stretched it here. It hasn't been processed in any way. I've, uh, I've cleaned it and I've soaked it and I've soaked it in a little bit of a, uh, a salt borax solution just to, so it won't de you know, deteriorate on me. But it hasn't been preserved or tanned or anything whatsoever. It's just been 
tacked on here. I didn't even stretch it tight as you can see, but look at this. back uh, you know several hundred maybe a thousand years ago used these things as uh, to make shields for battle shields and stuff I read about that and I thought man how much protection could that really be you know against an arrow or something but seriously that's well it's not bulletproof but it sure would stop somebody with a stone tipped arrow or something pretty impressive <laughs> 